I want to give you a quick update on the state of ME-CFS science or myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome science. I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory, and I spent all last week at the Stanford ME-CFS working group meeting, and this was a closed meeting for um, individuals who are involved in ME-CFS research, and there were about 100 people involved with that working group. There were scientists who were sharing their unpublished data or their work in progress, and then there were discussions on how to interpret those findings and how to tie together all the things that the different researchers were telling us. There were a lot of exciting results. Uh, I can't talk about the specific findings because they're not ready for publication and for release. I do hope that a lot of those are going to be becoming public soon, uh, but I can't talk about them specifically right now. But I can give my overall impressions of where the science is, given everything I saw and heard over the past uh, four days. Now, the meeting focused on the molecular aspects of MECFS, so trying to get to the very smallest units to figure out what causes MECFS fundamentally. Is it a dysregulated immune signal? Is it a genetic abnormality that's producing errant proteins? What is the first problem in the chain of events? So there wasn't as much discussion about treatments or brain imaging because those approaches weren't the uh, focus. So here's my thoughts on the last four days. Uh, first, there's clearly been an explosion of MECFS research. If I compare this meeting to one, say, five years ago, there are so many more people that are involved, and there are many different types of experts. There are more types of experts who are now tackling this problem. And so the areas being investigated are more broad. I think virtually every system of the body is being investigated to see if problems there are playing a role in MECFS. Um, the depth of the investigations are also greater. The tools are much more sophisticated and much more advanced than they were a few years ago from what I've seen. And the research and researchers are very savvy now on the complexities of MECFS. So there's a lot more thought on how to properly screen the individuals, uh, how do we define MECFS or ME or CFS? How do we separate it from similar diseases that can get confused with MECFS? So that, that's all very good. I also noted a very um, overall genuinely collaborative spirit to the research community, and that's not always the case in science. Uh, Sometimes science is um, people keeping their data to themselves, um, competing with everyone. In fact, that may be the norm for a lot of science, um, but that's definitely not the case here. It's a lot of scientists who are wanting to work together, who are wanting to collaborate, who want to share data, who want to fit their results together to figure out how to solve the problem, which is very good to see. So bringing all that together I think things have changed quite drastically for the better in the past few years. Uh, a few years ago, MECFS research really felt like a just a turtle, just slowly lumbering on, and uh, now it feels like a gazelle with just there's so much going on. It's happening so quickly that it's hard to even keep up with the updates. But but I think that's where we need to be because you know for you know there's always been a dedicated group of core researchers doing MECFS, doing really important work. Um, so there's always been good research being done for 20, 30 years, but now just the sheer throughput of information and the number of projects occurring simultaneously just means it's much more likely that there's going to be significant advances over the next two or three years. Um, now, I also made observations I, mean, I guess that's the good part, um, and and without question, it was uh, a tremendously helpful meeting, very informative, and very exciting to see the things that I know are going to be released very soon. And so, really good meeting. Now, there are some observations I made listening uh, and watching over the past uh, four days that I think are going to be important to how we get 
treatments, which is the ultimate uh, target. We need a treatment that can effectively manage or cure the disease for patients. So what I saw, number one, it's clear that to me that most MECFS researchers do not have a lot of human subject experience and certainly not clinical trial experience. And that's because they just weren't trained. I mean, it would be senseless for me to spend a lot of time learning molecular bench science work because that's not what I do, nor should we expect people doing molecular and cellular work to do clinical trials. So it's just, it, it would take you years to train up on how to switch from one mode to the other. But we need to have the clinical trials. And so I don't want the great findings that these basic scientists are making to be stuck in the kind of basic science experiments. We want to translate that to treatments. And so I think we need to form MECFS clinical trial centers that only do trials and they have the infrastructure to run many trials in parallel. And while there are centers that do a few trials, like usually one or two, there really is nothing that's just 100% running all kinds of different trials in a very well-constructed way, in a way where the results can be compared between studies. Um, so I really think that needs to be done. They can run trials that, you know, the basic scientists may say, look, I did this work, this suggests we should try drug A or drug B, and then that research clinical trial center could run that so that basic scientist doesn't have to worry about how do you do a clinical trial. So I really think it would propel treatment research forward quite quickly or quite effectively if we could have MECFS dedicated research centers. So that's something I'm going to push for. Um, given the all the interesting things I saw, there is going to be a great need for effective clinical trials. And so I think we have to get moving on that because running clinical trials is very difficult. It's more difficult, I think, than most people would guess. And it, it only takes one mistake to waste millions of dollars and years of time. And there are a lot of pitfalls in constructing and running and interpreting a clinical trial. So that's one thing I'll push for. Uh, looking, the, I guess the second thing, my second observation after this working group was it's really even more clear to me that there are probably MECFS subgroups. I think I, I see these different laboratories showing different really interesting things in, in different pathologies, and it just makes me think that they are identifying different MECFS subgroups with different things wrong with them that are probably going to need different treatments. Now, we don't know for sure that that's true. It's just, given everything I've seen, I really think that's the case, that we're going to wind up with two, three, four, five, maybe more distinct pathologies that are all in the umbrella of MECFS. And I'm far from the only person saying that. I think probably most MECFS researchers say that as well. Um, but it's not always represented in the research. But anyway, we need to figure out, I think, what are the critical subgroups? Because again, I think they're going to need different treatments. And I think a lot of, a lot of studies, particularly clinical trials, ignored the subgroups. And I think that's always been a problem because if you run a clinical trial, if you're testing a treatment and you just give it to all the people who meet MECFS criteria, that clinical trial has a really good chance of failing if there are actually subgroups. And that's because the statistics that we run require a lot of your patients or participants to respond to the treatment. In a lot of clinical trials, you have to have 50% of your MECFS participants receiving the treatment. They have to respond very well to the drug. That's what it takes for the drug to be to reach statistical significance and be considered a success. Now, that may be fine if all MECFS participants are the same, but I don't think they are. And if there's actually subgroups and maybe only 25% of the MECFS participants are in that subgroup 
and only 25% would therefore respond to this treatment, that treatment may be great for the 25%, but the clinical trial will still fail and the, and the treatment will be rejected. And I can't go into the statistics, but that's just the way it works. If you have subgroups and the treatment only works for some people, no matter how well it works, if you do your statistics on the entire groups, it's going to fail because most clinical trials don't have enough people to look at small subgroups. Um, you would probably need many, many, many hundreds, maybe even a thousand people to be able to be sensitive for the different subgroups. So we really have to work on identifying those subgroups in advance so we only give the drugs to the people who are most likely to respond to it. So really, that's that's my major observations. I, again, I was really heartened to see just how much work is being done. And I really think that for my part, given that there's so many scientists that are working on uh, the different pathologies and the different systems of the body, I really think my place moving forward is really driving hard on enabling the clinical trials. I think it's what we really need right now is have more treatments tested in parallel so we can get things into the hands of physicians. We can get tools to them that they can start using as soon as possible. So I think we need more clinical trials. We need, as I mentioned, we need clinical trial infrastructure. We need a way to make clinical trials easier to conduct. And then we really have to focus on these subgroups and look at that very carefully. So uh, that's just a quick update. Uh, I'll be, so again, apologize. I can't give you any specifics, but I, but one way or another, those things will get to you and you can um, take a look at those results when they become available. I'll be keeping an eye on the research. As soon as these things are coming out in publication, I'll be sure to share that with you and we can talk about that. And then hopefully, not too long, there'll also be more clinical trials that you can actually participate in. So that's it. Just a very quick update for this week and uh, tune in next week and I'll have some more scientific results to share with you. Thanks.